Hello and welcome to my channel. Today in the wood shop, we're going to make what is called a cowboy spatula. Uh, it's just a short, flat spatula tapered to one end and a 45 degree angle on the one side for moving your food around on either the blackstone griddle or I do a lot of cast iron cooking also. Uh, these are very useful and I have selected a piece of cherry to make the one for today out of. Uh, the first thing we need to do is mill this down. Uh, these are 3 eighths of an inch thick by about 12, 12 and a half inches long, two inches wide at the wide side and one inch at the other side. But those dimensions are not important. You can do anything you want actually. We're here at the DeWalt planer. We'll go ahead and start this up and mill this down. And there we have it. We're down to approximately three eighths of an inch. Again, it's not a critical dimension. Now we'll take one edge and straighten it on the jointer and make sure that we have a straight edge to cut to our width. Here we are. Now we have a nice straight edge to cut to width. We'll go over and cut this down to two inches wide. We'll just measure this out to about two inches, maybe just a little bit strong. There we go. Okay, there we go. Now, we'll take it over to the chop saw and cut it to length. Okay, we'll square up one end first. Gonna make this uh, about 12 and a half. We'll need a little bit extra here. There we go. We're now we're cut to size. Now the next thing we're going to do is cut the taper. We'll have to lay this out and take it over and cut it on the bandsaw. Now what I'm going to do here is start our taper back two inches from the critical edge here that we use as a scraper. And what this will do 
as this beveled edge wears, we can always come over to the chop saw and cut another 45 degree here. Just take a little slice off, straighten this back up. So we'll mark two inches here. And then get down here and come in half an inch each way. That leaves us with a one inch short taper. Now what we'll do, we'll connect these, just draw a line. There we have it. There's where we need to make our cuts. Now I'm going to cut this on the bandsaw. You could do it on different things. You could do it on the table saw if you had a taper jig. You could cut them by hand, but I just prefer to do them freehand on the uh, bandsaw. Okay, I just cut these freehand. I don't use any uh, guides or anything, and it works out quite well. We'll go ahead and get started here. Stink bug. Okay, that gives us our approximate shape. And as you can see, you got the flat part here and then it starts to taper down to the side. Does a pretty nice job. Now we'll go smooth these up and I'll show you how I do that. Now what I do, you could just sand this down or do it on a belt sander or even an orbital sander, but I tend to, anytime I have an excuse to use a hand plane, I do so. Uh, this is an old one of my dad's. It's a cheap one from uh, his youth, actually, and I can certainly afford a better one, but I just keep using this one just for old time's sake. And all it takes is just a couple short passes just to get that nice and straight. And it's not critical. And make sure you plane with the grain, not against it.
much better, much better. Okay, next thing we're going to do is round off our edges. Now, I tend to use the uh, router table. You could do it with sandpaper. You could do it. You could even put a taper on it with, with the plane here if you wanted to, or even just hand sand it. It doesn't matter. Uh, I, th I can do a much better job with the router. Now, we don't want to round over this edge, just this, the back, and the bottom. Now, off camera, I put it, I went over to my drill press and with a uh, sanding drum and just put a little rounding on the corner here. You don't have to do that. I think it gives it a nice uh, appearance. And you can drill a hole in here too to hang it up if you really want to. I, I choose not to. Now, what I, the router bit I have in here is just a simple 1 8 inch round over. And what we're going to do is round off both edges. There, that put a nice round edge on all four sides here, except for the front. Now, the only other cutting that we need to do is cut our 45 degree edge here on the front. We'll go over and take care of that on the miter saw. Okay, we'll take and set our miter to a 45 degree. And you could make this anything you want to. You can make it 30 degrees if you wanted to. It really wouldn't matter. Now, as you know, we cut a taper on here. So if we set this on here like this, we're going to be a little bit out of 90 degrees. So what I do is save this piece that we cut over on the bandsaw and put it under here to get us back to where we need to be. Now that's not critical. In fact, a lot, of, a lot of these are made intentionally with a taper on, so it really is not critical, but I prefer to keep it at 90 degrees. So we'll go ahead and put this on here like this, and we'll go ahead and make this cut.
Okay, there we go. Just pull it through nice and smooth and you'll get a nice 45 degree bevel on there. It looks really nice and works quite well. Now I finish these the same as I do a cutting board. I do three quarts or three coats, I should say, of 100% pure mineral oil. Then I put the, um, what you would call cutting board butter on. Uh, it's a mixture of beeswax and mineral oil. I'll put a coat of that on. And then I periodically, because these will, if you're cooking with them, it, that'll wear off <clears throat> and you have to keep applying. But I'll put a coat of mineral. I'm not going to finish the whole thing here on camera. That would just bore you to death. But I'm going to put a coat on here just to show you how it uh, brings out the finish on this cherry wood. Just makes the grain pop. And this will, being as it's cherry, it'll develop a nice patina over time and it'll look very nice. And the beauty of these things is if you wear them out, you just make another one. They're so simple to make. There, doesn't that bring that wood grain right out? Looks beautiful. Now, um, this is not a scraper. If you scrape like your cast iron skillet after you uh, cook some bacon in there, it's going to wear this edge out very quickly. So this is a spatula for cooking, not a scraper. Uh, most of the manufacturers, I use lodge cast iron, make scrapers for that purpose. So I wouldn't use this for this. Um, and just don't forget, as this wears, just cut it again. That's all you got to do. And keep applying uh, coats of that beeswax and uh, mineral oil on it, and it'll last you a long, long time. I really like using these. Uh, it's better than buying a store-bought spatula. It's, there's satisfaction in making your own tools, uh, whether it's cooking tools or woodworking tools. So that's, uh, we've come to the end of our video. Uh, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And uh, leave some comments down below uh, if you like it. And uh, we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.